Camelodunum is probably the most important pre-Roman British site, at least in southeastern Britain. Camelos is a war god, and Dunham, of course, means like fort. And it certainly does have the appearance of a fort. There, at least at that time, it's situated between two rivers, and to separate the area uh, of the inhabited site, there are huge dikes and ditches. So the ditches were between five and seven feet deep, and the dikes were between 10 and 15 feet tall. So you're looking at a fairly significant fortification. Uh, it certainly would have stopped any chariots, uh, would have probably stopped horses, which were the, you know, the main mobile uh, hit-and-run warfare that uh, the people of Britain practiced in the late Iron Age. Now, aside from being a settled community, uh, and I would go so far as to call this a town, uh, and I believe there's lots of towns in Britain before the Romans, but we just do not have the archaeological evidence for them because they were built out of wood. Um, and guess what? Wood doesn't survive very well after 2,000 years. And even if it's there, you're not even going to know that it's there unless you're specifically digging for it and you're doing very careful excavation. And so they had permanently settled communities. They, they were mainly practicing agriculture by this time, although they were supplementing it with pastoral activities and with, far, uh, with scavenging, hunting, etc. But primarily, it was a settled agricultural society. This site probably had many thousands of people living there. There is evidence, we have the archaeological evidence for farming, there is a large site at Ga called Gosbecks, and it's on the, the southern end of the overall Camelodunum site. And there was a religious complex there. Now, previously it was assumed that it was a farmstead or maybe um, the chieftain's residence. Uh, some said it was even Conobelin's uh, residence. But now it's kind of speculated that it's actually had some sort of religious connotations. Now, of course, the site itself is named after a god, so one, you know, it's a pretty safe assumption that there's some sort of religious connotation with the site. But we see in the Roman period, there is a temple built over the previous building site, and this normally implies that this ground was considered sacred. And the new temple uh, is considered to be of a Romano-British style. And a farmer found in a field nearby a very well-preserved statue of quote-unquote Mars. Now, Mars, obviously, the war god, is a direct link to Camelos. This is often the case with the Celtic religion after the Roman invasion. Roman iconography of the gods is used, and sometimes the names are used, uh, but they're also used interchangeably with the old names. So, you know, they take the statues, and they take uh, sometimes the names, but the old practices and the old ideas about these deities remains. So what I think you see in Britain is that where the Romans established power centers is where already there is significant settlement of people. Okay, there are already were towns before the Romans laid down their grid streets. We simply have more archaeological evidence for Roman activity because of the construction methods that they used. In pre-occupation times, there is an industrial sh site already. Uh, it's called Sheepen. It's a modern name, obviously. We don't know what it was referred to back in the day. But there was coin production at this site. Um, there were temples at this site, continuing into the Roman period. There was pottery being made and also exported. And there were things being imported into this site along the river Colne. And it's beside this site that the Romans decide to set up their more permanent fortification uh, after the occupation. 
When the Romans invaded in 43 AD, the final site in which Claudius, you know, declared his victory over the Britons and had a bunch of tribes sign terms, it was at Camelodunum. And it was specifically at Gosbex, at the sacred site. They established a temporary fort there, and this is where they accepted the surrender of various tribes. Now, by 49 AD, uh, the administration thought that this site was secured. They no longer needed significant military presence here, because probably they were right initially. But what they did is because the Trinovantes did not surrender to the Romans easily, they fought. Uh, they fought until the end, and in fact, one of their leaders fled to another area of Britain, and actually into Wales, um, and kept fighting uh, until he was finally captured. But because they, because of that, the Trinovantes were given very terrible conditions. They were not allowed to establish their own, uh, what they call a kivitas capital. Uh, they were not allowed to, uh, for instance, call the site Camlodunum, establish it as a formal Roman town. Instead, uh, the Romans imposed a colony. And a colony is a big punishment for the local population. Because what it is, is the importation of Roman citizens, uh, usually uh, former military people who retire and are given land. And when I say given, I mean the local administration takes land from the local population and gives it to a foreigner, i.e. the Roman citizen. And there's no, you know, I, I don't think the local would have probably got anything for it, or if they did, it was a very small amount. So that's what happens with the colony. The other thing that happens with the colony is that the locals have uh, very poor conditions compared to the colonists. So a Roman citizen has, you know, full rights under Roman law. The local British people at this time were not Roman citizens, not until much later. They had almost no rights. So you can imagine the kind of horrible things that these colonists did to local people. Uh, abuse of women, you know, rampant murders, uh, stealing, uh, uh, violence, you name it. And they could probably get away with it all because the locals would have basically no recourse because they're not Roman citizens. And meanwhile, most of these settlers here in the colony were former military people, you know, held in high regard by, of course, the other military people who would be the ones responsible for enforcing any laws. So by the time of the Boudican Rebellion, there is a dynamic going on at this site. You have the colony established, possibly upwards of 10,000 people already living there by 60 AD. You have Temple of Claudius set up, the imperial cult temple, largest temple in Britain ever uh, of the Roman style, I should say. You have, you know, uh, many fine shops importing lots of goods, large houses being erected, and you have no uh, military fortifications at the site. The former military encampment that was there was dismantled. The buildings were converted into public use or were dismantled. So a affluent settler community that is abusing the local population with no defenses. And around this community, you have the already existing local population, probably thousands of people, many thousands, I can't give you a figure because we just don't have the archaeological evidence. We have no literary evidence. But I am certain because we do have we do have local evidence from Sheep N, we do have local evidence from Gosbex, but not enough to give us a population estimate. We know that there was locals living all around the area. There was locals conducting economic activity at Sheep N. There was a market at Gosbeck's. There was a, a local temple uh, at Gosbeck's. And later on, there would be a big theater at Gosbeck's uh, that also is probably related to local activity. 
British activity and not uh, immigrant activity. But it, it may have involved the immigrants as well. But certainly you have many thousands of people there, probably much higher a much higher population than what you have in the colony, but significantly poorer. The average colonist, the average military person in Britain, uh, their annual pay probably was like a lifetime earnings of any British person. Just, you know, astronomical economic imbalance. And so these people would have been walking around like gods and doing whatever they pleased, treating the local people like crap and building up this resentment. And you see this sort of thing happen even in the present day where you have these sorts of scenarios. So as soon as, you know, the opportunity presents itself, the rebellion begins. And of course, there's the classic story of Boudicca and injustice done to her daughter and then the taking away of her rightful rule and so on. It's not my intention to take away from any of that, but simply to give a broader context to what is happening at this time. So basically every building at the site in in the colony is destroyed. Uh, but it seems like only affected the colony. So in other words, the local population uh, were certainly involved in this. Uh, they didn't burn down their own homes. They only burned down the homes of the colonists. And so the Boudican destruction layer uh, didn't affect so much the local population. Now, of course, we have lots of buried coins and stuff within the colony. Uh, when people knew that the town was under attack, they quickly uh, buried whatever goods that they could under their floor and didn't survive to retrieve them. They held up in the Temple of Claudius. Maybe they were thinking the god Claudius was going to come down and save them, uh, but he didn't, and they all died. However, the revolt was unsuccessful. I'll do another video at some point on my thoughts on that but for various reasons it did not succeed and there was very harsh repercussions for the groups who took part in that rebellion and the colony was again uh, I believe heavily subsidized by the probably the Emperor himself um, or if not some other very high level and the site is able to rebuild, the colony is able to reestablish very quickly. The temple's rebuilt, they put up walls within 10 years, they've got major housing going in, they put in an, a new theater, and a theater is also established at Gosbeck's, strangely enough, because maybe, they're, maybe this is a new strategy, maybe they've decided at some point that they need to placate the locals and maybe this theater is part of that. We don't really know what the context is, but there is a Roman road uh, leading from the colony uh, to directly to the theater. So it seems likely that colonists were at least visiting the theater, um, but the theater is located right beside the sacred site and the local temple at Gosbeck. So it, it's obviously related to that in some way. And of course, that temple is very likely related to Camelos or Mars. So despite, you know, they are the only site in Britain known to have a circus, no other site's been found to have a circus in all of Britain. So obviously patronage going on there may be related to the imperial cult, hard to say. But, however, by the, third by the end of the 3rd century, all of this stuff is falling into ruin. There's depopulation in the town. And many have linked this to Saxon raids, uh, which were affecting the East Coast at this time. Uh, but likely it's also connected to the lack of resources that the Roman Empire was experiencing 
at this same time. So whatever patronage that the colony was receiving was drying up. There was not new construction going on, not even maintenance going on of some of these sites. And the theater at Gosbecks falls into ruin. The circus goes out of use as well. So what we really need to begin to think about with this site isn't so much the Roman activity. It is the activity before uh, the Roman occupation that is really of interest to me. And the, the decision by the Romans, which I think backs up this theory, is that the Romans aren't just establishing f forts and stuff in the middle of nowhere. They establish these things next to or within uh, existing population centers. Because one, they, they need somewhere to get supplies from, but also two, they're using it as a means of pacifying the local population. And you can't do that if you're sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Just because they don't have grid network roads or huge stone columns doesn't mean they didn't have towns. They absolutely did. But those towns were significantly different than Roman towns or Greek towns. And due to an effort on my part to keep on topic and to keep you know, the time frame of this video down, I'll explain my idea of pre-Roman British towns uh, in another video uh, within a week or so. So, I hope you found this interesting, and as always, stand tall.